Hi, and welcome to Unit 2.1, where we're talking about power and radical functions. Main things we're going to talk about are negative exponents, rational exponents. We kind of touch base on key features, but at this point, you really should know those, so I'm going to just shuffle right through them. I hope you pause and look at those slides at that moment. And then, of course, we're going to finish with solving radical equations because that's kind of our big ticket item for today. So starting with our power functions. Well, what is a power function? Some examples would be like x squared, 3x cubed, 6x to the 47th, anything raised to a power. And it doesn't matter if you have a coefficient, as long as it's not zero, right? The big thing about um, power functions is, well, first of all, they are polynomials, so we do need to know that end behavior. That end behavior, all I mean by that is what's happening at the ends. Y'all know limit notation, so at this point, I no longer want to see this information. You should not be writing this. You should be writing this as true limit notation. As a reminder, I'm going to write one example. So on the right-hand side here, the limit as x approaches, and where am I going here? I'm going to positive infinity. Um, and what is this called? It's called p of x. So of p of x is equal to, and what is p of x doing? As I follow p of x, it's going to positive infinity. So just a recall, write your m behavior as a limit. Okay, but what you have to know here is that when power functions have an odd degree, x cubed, x to the fifth, x to the seventh, you're going to have m behavior that's doing the opposite. Opposite. When p is an even degree, x squared, x to the fourth, x to the eighth, etc., then your arms are going to be doing the same thing. Even degrees are going to go the same directions for your end behavior. Now, what's actually, you know, like what do we actually use power functions for? Well, the two things we're going to talk about are our negative exponents and our rational exponents. But, you know, of course we can't we have to pause and talk about key features. And what am I talking about for key features? The main thing I'm to fight figuring out is, you know, domain, range, increasing, decreasing, uh, intercepts, uh, continuity, et cetera, et cetera. But right now what we're trying to recognize is what do you think is going to happen? Well, if I have a positive coefficient and an even exponent. Well, an even exponent tells me both arms are going to go the same way, but positive tells me they're both going to go up. So let's check that graph. Boom, we are correct. Here's my other one. This one's a little funky, um, but this is an odd exponent. I really should have written this different. My apologies, but this is an odd exponent, but it's a negative exponent. I'm going to show you what that looks like, and it looks like our rational equation. And why are we doing that? Well, because today we're talking about negative exponents. To talk about them, we kind of have to recall two sets of negative exponents, our reciprocal function, which looks like this, and our reciprocal squared function, which looks like this. Again, these are parent functions. At this point, you should know these. You should know their key features. But let's actually solve some negative exponent. What is an exponent? In essence, you know, x cubed tells me I take that base, in this example, base is x, and I multiply it by itself, however many number of times the exponent tells me. This one tells me three times, so that really looks like x times x times x. So just a recall about exponents. But what happens when we have a negative exponent? In essence, a negative exponent is how many times something can be divided by itself. So if I have this example, 5 to the negative 3, that can also be rewritten as 1 divided by 5 divided by 5 divided by 5. And I plug that into a calculator, you get 0 0.0008. But is there a better way to do this? Is there an easier way? Heck yes, and that's the way we're going to do today. So just to show you what this looks like, 5 to the negative 3 is the same as rating, writing 1 over 5 cubed, as you can see down here. Well, we know that 5 cubed is 125, because 5 times 5 times 5 gives me 125. If you plug that into a calculator, you get the same answer, 0 0.008. So this is proof that the way I teach you is going to be a correct way. We don't need the technical way. We just need to know how to solve a negative exponent. In essence, what a negative exponent is going to do, how we're going to solve them, how to drop that negative, you're going to take it from one end of a fraction, put it in the other end of a fraction, and drop the negative. It's as simple as that. So, you know, uh, the biggest thing, you know, if you're going in from the denominator, you move to the numerator and drop the negative. You go from the numerator, you move to the denominator and drop the negative. Do not forget to drop the negative. That's where I see the most mistakes. Remember that all functions that are simply in the numerator, like 3x or x squared, are all natural numerators with a denominator of 1. So when you switch them, 1 has to now be on top. So here I have an example, x to the negative 3. Well, like I told y'all, this is a natural numerator because technically what's underneath it is 1. So I'm going to switch these little guys right here. And that's going to become 1 over x. And then I would write negative 3. But what did I tell y'all to never forget? Don't forget to drop the negative. So 1 over x cubed is our real answer.
And I have, think I have that typed in here. Yeah, okay, there we go. We have another teacher model right here. What happens when there's something funky happening? It's not just a one. Well, all we're going to do is we're just going to multiply throughout. I simply multiply across. So I'm going to put parentheses around what I'm not moving. Well, the top has no negative exponents, so I'm not going to move it. Then as I move this up top, I'm going to put multiplication in between. That becomes x to the positive 4. This goes away. Now if I want to distribute, I'm allowed to, or I can leave it on the outside. And I've shown you both examples here on bottom. As you can see, I've got both the distributed and the factored out version. It's up to you how you want to end up writing that. Here are some examples. I hope you pause, work on them, and come back. Um, but here's first example, second example, third example, fourth example, another example, and I think our final example. Oh, one more. Oh, two more. I lied. <laughs> Okay, so moving on to rational exponents. What are rational exponents? We just did negative exponents, where we simply flip it either from the numerator to the denominator or from the denominator to the numerator, and we drop that negative exponent. Now we're talking about rational exponents. Well, what is a rational? Think about the first half of that word, ratio. Well, what do we know ratios look like in our world? They are simply fractions. So what's a rational exponent? It's a fraction exponent. So it's really um, exponents written as fractions in their simplest form. So here's an example. We have x to the the four thirds. So I have a fraction exponent, but we can write that as the cubed root of x to the fourth. You're sitting there going, whoa, 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 Miss Jag, how did you get that information? Well, I got that information by simply remembering that this rational exponent up here can be re uh, remembered as power over root, right? So over here, I have x to the fourth. That is a power. The root is the, th the bottom number right there, number three. That's the root form, the cubed root, okay? Uh, one method of remembering this is to remember it alphabetically. P comes before R in the alphabet, so power should be over root. If you can't remember that, I have a little story for you. I want you to think about the President of the United States and who guards him, the Secret Service, right? So in that chain of command, who's above who? Well, the President is going to be the boss of the Secret Service guy, right? So the President's always going to be on top. But I want you to think about where he sits. He sits in his Oval Office, inside the Oval Office. And who's on the outside? That's the Secret Service guys. They've got to guard that door, keep him safe, right? So again, the President's on the inside inside and he's at the top of the food chain. The Secret Service guys are on the outside and they're at the bottom of the food chain. So let's see what that looks like. So if we have X to the four thirds, as you can see, the president's on the top of that food chain. Up top, his security detail would be on the lower. That's on bottom, power over root. So we can think about that oval office right here. The president's on the inside. Well, what's on the inside right here? That number four, on the inside of the root, we have the president or the power. On the outside, you have Secret Service guy, okay? If that helps you remember, it helps you. Whatever device you have to know to remember power over root, that's okay. So I have an example here, x to the th uh, one-thirds. First thing I need to do is look at my power and my root. So what's my power? It's the number on top. It's one. What's my root? It's the number on bottom. It's three. Okay, so we write it on top, x to the first. There's that little president on the inside. There's the little secret service on the outside. Just to recall, anything to the first power is itself. Anything to the zeroth power is one. So x to the first power is simply x. So if I want to simplify that, that's the cubed root of x. I have one more example to show you. We have now x to the five halves. Again, look at them separately. What's my power? Five. What's my root? Two. Okay, so my little president is going to be on the inside. My Secret Service guy is going to be on the outside. So there it looks like. But here, another recall. What is this? What if I have a two on the outside of my root? Isn't that simply the same as saying the square root? So we can just standard, uh, standard root that and show that as the square root of x to the fifth. I have a few examples. Again, I hope you pause and work through them. x to the sixth fifth, x to the one half, which should just be the square root of x, x to the three halves, x to the 5 thirds. But now I have an example that involves both negative and rational exponents. So I'm going to take a moment to do this. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to address that negative. Well, how do I get rid of a negative? I take it from one end of the fraction, move it to the other end of the fraction, and drop the negative. So right now it's over 1. So I'm going to switch those little buddies. And that becomes 1 over x to the four thirds. Why? Because I've already dropped that negative. Now I deal with that rational. So my president's on the inside. So x to the fourth is on the inside. I put my little secret service buddy on the outside. And don't forget to put a one. Sorry, I got to hit some hiccups in there. So that's how we solve those questions. Okay, here's another example if you want to pause and see that you can do this one correctly. And another 
and that's it. Now we're going to move on to radical functions. How do we solve radical functions? Again, to remind you, radicals are simply anything that's got that root. Okay, it's the easiest example that I, the easiest explanation that I can give you about 